What about June 7th? We got a Bank of Canada announcement. What's what's happening? Zen, what do you think? I think low probability we're going to get something. I think everyone got spooked with the CPI print, but I think July hike is on the table again for sure. So yeah. June, it's uh, nothing. June, uh, I, th I think it's, I think it's still going to be the same, but they okay. may talk about bringing one back in July. Like what I'm watching the most for right now is the inflation print for June, but that may not come out until like after the July announcement, right? Because mm -hmm. in June, 2022 is the highest CPI print at like 8.8%. And if we don't have a base effect, which is like a rollover next year kind of thing, yeah, 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 yeah. and it comes down, oh man, are we in for trouble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similar yeah, to the like, market, how we compared now to May, 2022 prices, right? Yeah. Like obviously February was going to be down 14%. But now we're starting to get real accurate numbers to figure out where the real estate market is. And, and inflation is going to be the same thing. I think right? I saw for, yeah, the year over year Trev numbers were down like 19%, sorry, 19,000 from last year. So it's like basically caught back up. Uh, total. Yeah, year yeah like total. Like, the, yeah, year to date. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I think things are going to look rosy in the future when you do year over year comparison. Sure. Or when you do month over month comparison, seasonal slowdowns. And the big thing really just comes down to like, are we going to get a, bad inflation print in june or a good one and like the gdp gdp number came in really really strong too but that's like mm -hmm. a lagging effect too right where we had a lot of uh gdp like growth in q1 i think it's q2 q3 could be pretty soft i think that tiff should just go on youtube and listen to what we're saying about the market Always. before he makes a decision because i feel like the numbers he's getting are all lagging where we're already like market's slowing down the prices are coming down don't worry tiff it's okay april was hot we know but things change in may don't worry i don't think tiff knows that that's why i think there's a risk for the quarter point increase because it's like i really do believe that he thinks that things are going to turn on a dime he doesn't understand the seasonality of of prices and i know but I, think, not but I think but... we're we're focusing on the fact that we are in real estate and we being torontonians think we're the center of toronto and canada sorry canada I don't think he looks at just Toronto real estate price because if you think about it, let's say 90,000 transactions a year, is he really going to move interest rates over 90,000 transactions a year? I don't think so. You got to look at how the oil is doing, how our currency is doing relative to the USD, what our trading looks like. There's so many bigger factors that I think us as real estate pundits only focus on the real estate component. There's so many other factors, way too many. That's way beyond all our pay grades. Hundred. I was being facetious, but 100% oh, agree, see. obviously. But <laughs> I'm, I I get it when we're when we're looking at how you know he's going to make decisions, but real estate's that one factor that is going to be part of like heavily weighted in the basket, right? As the so in April, I believe based on what I read was that one of the the contributors to the CPI increase was was housing, right? And obviously had to. We were yeah, talking about that for months. And obviously, like, fuel, how does CPI fuel is another thing that's also been. Um, uh, on the rise, but that also came back down recently too. I've noticed. Yeah. yeah. Right. Do, so, do you subscribe to um, Ben Rabidou's, uh his reports? Uh, Daryl, I know I, Ben, I, I, but no, yeah, you know Ben. I yeah. see his stuff. I, I, on Twitter. Too, I like used it. to see his stuff on Twitter. Mm. Um, so he he had a sensitive chart. topic. <laughs> I see. Okay, sorry. Like he had Darryl's a chart. Daryl's not allowed on Twitter anymore right now. He's I taking see. a break. Did you get banned? Yeah. He's taking a break. I see. Okay, he's taking a break. He's taking a uh, uh, forced break. Yeah. 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 But he was saying like of the four percent that was in uh, the CPI print, like 0.8 of that came from mortgage rates. So like you could drop CPI by not increasing the interest rates anymore. It's like cyclical. It makes no sense, mm -hmm. right? So like I can see that happening, right? But like when you have so much like uh, housing replacement costs and like everyone's interest rate had gone up, the CPI is obviously going to go up. Sure. Like the fact that how can you narrow down everyone's life with one number as a basket makes no sense. Everyone's CPI number is different. Like if mm -hmm. say, CK, you enjoy very fine Wagyu steaks, your CPI may be really high because beef has like doubled in price. But if you only eat chicken, chicken didn't go up that much. But the, the way they figured out stupid, like it, look, if you go that anywhere and you go, hey, hey, TK, you paying more for shit now? Yep. How much more? I don't know. 10, 20%. Thanks. Hey, Zen, you paying more for stuff? Like you're not going to find anybody that says, you know what? Three, four percent. I'm getting good deals all over the place. It's way cheaper now everywhere. Like everybody knows it goes up. But you know, okay, so you said earlier, like, you know, we got all these pundits that are talking and we're all in, making up stuff. And I mean, it's true to a degree, but like we need to do this to figure things out. And 100%. They need help figuring it out because 
of all this stuff we're talking about. Like, look, we're, we don't live in this market where like there's somebody sitting there going like, OK, let's change the rates today. And OK, like, no, maybe we won't change the rates today or maybe we're going to tell them we're going to change the rates, but we won't change the rates. And then you have like all these other factors, right, that like there's all these things that happen that aren't just like par for the course. So it's like the market could be going a certain way and everything's good. And then they introduce a policy and everybody's got to figure out how to like deal with that now. And then things are moving along a little bit and then a war breaks out or a pandemic or a something like there's always something that we need to talk through to see what might or how it may affect, I guess, our pocketbooks at the end of the day. But like if, if we weren't doing this, would it be better? I personally think so. Like, would I be happier not knowing all I know and just hold on to my property and live life? A hundred percent. Happiest people I meet. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like happiest there's, there's, people I meet. Why are we all doing this? Of, well, TK and I are in the industry and people are going to ask us the question. So we have to know what's going on. Right. Mm -hmm. And like I'm educational forward. So I need to be able to educate my clients about this. But would I be happier not knowing about this? Or would I be happier not? Like, here's a good example. I think... I was on Twitter for like a tiny bit, but it was so negative, even though there's good information coming from it. And I was like, I'm out because I just need my life to be good. I don't need to be seeing all this negativity. I'm like, I would be mm -hmm. happier not knowing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for me in real estate, would I be happier not knowing all this stuff and holding what I have right now and just moving off my life? A hundred percent. But do we need to overanalyze everything and just try to you know, kind of get an answer from each and every way and each different person's perspective analyzing it? No, we don't have to because you can make numbers say whatever they want, honestly. Like I try to have a very yes. approach on things, but like as a very good sales guy, I can tell you the cup is half full or half empty. It's totally up to me and what you want to believe, right? Yeah. So I think everyone's just arguing too much over like small things. But if you just take at big fundamental things, Occam's razor, which is like a medical term for it, like the most simplest solution of everything is too much demand for too little stuff. That's it when it comes down to real estate. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. It just boils down to that. So there Anything. you have it. That's the last Canadian real estate show of all time. We just ended we with a bank. We don't need to do this anymore. anymore. That's it, guys. We don't have enough places. Too many I people. feel free. I feel We're freer starting already. We're talking about what are you going to do with all your spare time? <laughs> I'm already trying to figure it out without Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> The new the new channel will will be focused on Elon Musk saving the world. That's right. From a mutant alien race with robots. Now he's See on all my, next week. He's on my hit list now. <laughs> Fucking banned me. That's don't worry. I'll talk to him. All right. He owns, he owns it, right, my right. ass. Anyways, thank you, Zen. Zen, amazing, amazing. Um, again, shameless plug. Where can people find you? Just uh, find me on Prime Properties TO on YouTube, or if you want to book a call, it's www.chatwithzen.com. That is it. Hey guys, thanks for watching our clips channel. Why don't you go and check out some more clips? We got lots of other good content somewhere over here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Boom. That was good. That was good. That was good. I like that. That was good.